I'm Katie Clancy, Chief House Hawker for the Cape House at William Ravis. And I'm Sarah Lapsley Martin of T. Martin Lapsley at Killing Grover Real Estate. And this is What's Good Cape Cod, where we show you the Cape through the eyes of a couple of locals. Every week, we tell you about a person, a place, and a thing that we think you should know about. So this week, we're talking about a local winemaker who's also a philanthropist, a historic penny candy store, and a spot where Dorothy and Toto made their big premiere. (laughs) All right, well, I'll start with our person. Our person is my friend, Joe Carr. And I'm really proud to be able to say that because Joe is a, he's a lot of things, but he's a really generous, kind, good person um, above all. Um, So he is a winemaker of of some prestige. Um, (laughs) <laughs> Joe Carr wines, Josh Sellers. Um, you, <laughs> I know you've drank his wine, so yes, I'm fine. Yes. Well, let's just <laughs> um, if yeah, so and his, his his wines are all over the world, yes. um, and they're wonderful and they're affordable. They're not cheap, but they're like you know within reach, which is nice. Yep. Um, I've spent some time snuggling with a Reserva from time to time. <laughs> just... <laughs> You're on your pillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, one of the things that I just I adore about Joe is that he he cannot give enough. He has like a compulsion to give and to contribute and to you know to have meaning and purpose like we all do. And the way he does it, he I mean I'm sure he does it, you know, not locally too, but he's very involved locally in in the community in two particular instances where I have really gotten to witness his generosity was um the well, at the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod, um, he's very involved there, great donor. Um, his wines were served at uh, the Pops by the Sea last year. Um, but the the place where I really got to know Joe was a couple years ago and when we lost Officer Gannon and the whole community just, we were just all so devastated. Devastated and heartbroken, yeah. It just was such a horrible thing anyway what I did that, you know, I felt like I had to do something. So I said, I, you know, I, I'm going to have a benefit. I'm going to do something. I'm going to have a fundraiser. I was doing these dog walks and I said, I'll have a dog walk. I'll get all my dog friends together. Um, and we'll, you know, because, it, you know, officer or Sergeant Gannon had, you know, his, his canine was injured as well. And I said, well, we'll do something to benefit animals. That's what we'll do. And yeah. I got um, connected with actually someone who's going to be featured on our show another time, Joe Ambrosini who is the head of uh, the Cape and Islands Canine Relief Fund, which helps, um, uh, you know, so when you, when these dogs retire, there's really no program for them. You know, it's not like right. they don't get a pension and benefits like actual <laughs> officers do. So right. like, someone's got to take this, this dog that's been trained to like, in some cases kill, you know, yeah. to manage this dog, feed this dog, take care of it. And it's, and it's, as it ages and yeah. to their family, it's expensive. And that- so he, he raises money to support these dogs in their retirement. So I said, that's what we'll do. We'll do a benefit for that. Well, I didn't realize that Joe was actually, Joe Carr was actually already a supporter of the Canine Relief Fund. And so when uh, Joe Ambrosini asked him to help out, my God, that man showed up with like, like a box truck full of cases of wine. Wow. He came to the event, personally signed them and, and let us just sell them. He just gave them to the organization we poured his wine and we also we also sold these signed bottles and i thought wow that's an awesome guy and then like the day before the event now this is chaos we put this huge event together in three weeks the day before and i'm trying to get all these logistics together joe goes i'd like to make another donation i'm like okay great whatever we'll make it work he's like i'd like to donate a dinner at cbi with six people um, and my wine, I'll, I'll take care of it. We'll do it. It was like, okay, well, I'm like, fine. You know, we, we write it in and we, we get it up there. And so the auction comes and it happens. And, you know, we've, but we're all grieving. We're sad. You know, my friends and, and colleagues and I've been working hard to put this event together. We're pretty tired. We may have had some Joe Carr wine. Might have, yes. And so the bidding starts. <laughs> Up goes my paddle. Up goes my paddle. I keep bidding on this dinner because I'm like, this is a great guy. I want to hang out with him. Up goes my husband's like, I cut it off. Sold. We freaking won it. That's awesome. Number. So I ended up actually sharing it. For a good cause. Yeah. (laughs) For a good cause. Yeah. Yeah. But I actually ended up sharing it with a colleague of mine. So, you know, we all went to this 
dinner with Joe. He took us to the Chatham Bars Inn in a limo. He came and picked us all up at our houses, did a tour in, in, in cheese and wine at his house, saw his wine cellar, went to TBI, had a beautiful day. It was just awesome. That's He's a, just, that's a, and, that, and that's a, a cool, such a cool experience that not many people get to do. Yeah, it was awesome. So Joe's just a good guy. I anyway, yeah, I could go on forever, but he's just a good guy and he enjoys giving. And that I love. I just really respect that. All right. I'm sorry. So that's our person. What's our place this week? So our place this week is the 1856 Country Store in Centerville. So I just love this store. Um, it's really like stepping back into history, into time. And so it's on Main Street in the Historic District in Centerville. Um, it's known to most people as the Penny Candy Store, but it is so much more than just penny candy. They have they have gifts, whether it be you know jewelry, housewares, toys, um, and it, they honestly just have gifts that are unique. So it, whenever I need a gift, you can go in there, you can find it for whatever age range you're looking for. Um, and there's of course a whole back room that has actually penny candy, so you can go, you can put it in the bag. They're at that right now. They're doing. Um, you can order online and then pick up your penny candy. Like it, it's like a curbside pickup they do. So, yep. you know, people aren't wanting to go into the store. They can still get their candy. Um, so it's been owned, family owned right now since the 1970s. Um, they, this family moved here in the 70s. They had five daughters. They all work together and run it. It is now, you know, moved down the family, which is, is more the, you know, the daughters are running it now, but they're doing a great job. And, of course, there's history to this building. I mean, I thought because it was called the 1856 Country Store that that's when it was built, which you would kind of assume. Yeah, there were plenty of houses around here were built. In no, here. in my research, I found out that um, it actually was built in 1840, and it was originally built to store cranberries after they harvest them. So they would store the cranberries there. Um, and then a few years later, just two years later, um, Samuel and Moses Hallett, um, they turned it into a shoe store. So that was in 1942, and then in eight, I mean, 1842, excuse me. And in 1856, that's when it turned into like the general store. So- oh, okay, um, all right. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. And it's, it's a red building. When you go by, it just has that, you know, a charming feel to it that you oh, really- I mean, really artists, yeah. every, you know, it's, it's been painted a million times by different exactly. artists. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's also funny. It's not a place you would go to talk about politics, but outside there's the- Two benches. So one says Republican, one says Democrat. So I know people love relaxing on the benches, whatever side you decide, you know, seat you decide to sit on. Um, don't talk about it, but it's, you know, you can sit there and people take their pictures. And one of the really cool things that they did during the pandemic, um, I think it was in maybe in April um, when we were kind of all really hunkered down, they did a candy delivery. So you can message them with how many kids you have and your address. And they actually dropped off a little brown bag of candy. And my daughter was so excited. So it was just a, a great way to give back to the community. They didn't ask for anything in return. And it was, it was a free thing that they did. And it was, it was really. I didn't know about that. That's awesome. It was just, you know, something to brighten your day while we were all housebound. And yeah. you know, to open your front door and have that little bag of candy. It was, it was really sweet. Oh, that is so yeah. cool. That's awesome. And they, you know, they did it themselves. The sisters, the, you know, the owners went and yep. delivered it all. I think they maybe did it over like two or so days. And it was just this, it's a, just a sweet gesture. Yes, so. what a great thing to do at a time like this. That's good. So definitely check them out, get your candy and get your gifts. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's our place. What's our thing this week? So our thing this week is the Cape Cinema. So another historic place, actually. So the Cape Cinema was founded in the 1930s, um, in 1930, actually, and it's located in Dennis Village. Um, if you've gone by it, it actually looks like a, a church from the outside and it has real like art deco feel. Um, it's amazing inside because they have a 6,400 square foot mural and it's, you know, you look up and it? it's on the ceiling and it's, it's just, it's the representation of the heavens and the constellation. So it's just breathtaking. I mean, I'm sure you can attest to, it's just, it's stunning. Very cool. Yeah. We went there last year to see um, Downton Abbey. Perfect oh, yeah. place to see Perfect the Downton Abbey. Because we're sitting yeah. in like squishy chairs yeah. Yeah. and you can look up and they can move the chairs around. You're literally sitting in armchairs watching a movie. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's such a great spot. And just looking at that mural, you're just like, wow, where else are you going to see this in a cinema? And yeah. um, so I was, again, doing a little digging on them. And I didn't realize this, but one of their claims to fame is that they showed the world premiere of The Wizard of Oz in 1939. So they were one of only three test markets, which is crazy to me. So one out of three was in Dennis here. They yeah. showed it the day before the rest of the world saw it. Um, 
and they when you go in there they actually have the poster like in the lobby right above the box box office yep. so you can see the show poster um they show it now on the anniversary you know they show wizard of oz every year on the anniversary that um when it was released and it's just so cool that here on cape cod one of the it's right here. i know we keep doing this too sir we're like i can't believe this is here on cape cod like Cape Cod's a really cool place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't, um, you know, they, you know, going through whether they're opening or not, they're doing some virtual screenings and things. So, you know, just stay tuned and, and stay on top of them and see they're when. Always, yeah, even yeah. You know, COVID or not, they definitely uh, live stream lots of things already. Exactly. Um, but whether, you know, how many people can go in there, or, or we just yeah. don't know yet yeah. at this point. So. But it's, yeah, it's, a, it's just such a great landmark and to have it, have it on Cape Cod. It's something to check yeah, out. Sure. It really is. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, I think we gave you guys plenty of stuff to do and think about with our person, place, and thing this week. Uh, if you keep following us before long, you'll know Cape Cod like we know Cape Cod.